This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. Hello and welcome to the SEMA F1 course called Financial Reporting and Taxation, uh, provided to you by Open Tuition. Uh, thank you for joining us. I'm Chris Barlow. I'm going to go through and take you right the way throughout the course from start to finish, going through there, chatting through each and every chapter, giving you answers to all the particular examples. However, please just note, you will not pass the exam just by listening to me and the videos. You need to go through there and do plenty of work outside of our time together over the internet uh, and work plenty of questions and do plenty of studying from the study text and those questions from the revision kit of whichever tuition provider it is that, that you've decided to choose. Okay. Uh, so let's go through, uh, have a look at the various bits and pieces. First of all, let's just chat our way through the syllabus. Uh, so with regards to the syllabus, uh, there are four sections. Uh, first section talks about the regulatory environment, financial reporting and corporate governance. Uh, I think we've got the three chapters uh, to, to go through and, and chat our way through. Uh, and those three chapters there uh, look at essentially why do we have a regulatory environment uh, and how is that regulatory environment adopted? OK, uh, so essentially who monitors what goes on within the accounting profession and what happens if we are not following the rules within that regulatory environment? OK, uh, also talks about something that's very topical, uh, which is corporate governance. So looks about the, the stewardship and the ownership of a business. Because we have there, don't we? We have the shareholders uh, who are the principals. The directors are the agents. Uh, the directors should be running the business on behalf of the shareholders. And the shareholders would like to see that the directors are, are putting in place good principles of corporate governance. Because if they are, the shareholders can be comfortable with the, the financial results that are pr presented to the shareholders and also be, be confident in the future success of the business. OK, uh, with regards to the syllabus, uh, I think that's there's 10 percent. So I think you're going to get 60 objective test questions. We'll talk about the, the style of questions in a moment. But 10 percent of 60, you should get six questions on those. There. The good thing is, is that there'll be no computation involved in there whatsoever. That's good, isn't it? So yeah, no numbers. So you can put your calculator away. You then need to get your calculator out because we then start to look at financial accounting and reporting. Now, this is split into two sections. It's by far and away the biggest area of the syllabus. It takes up 45 percent of the exam. So I think that should work out as 27 questions. And what we look at here is we look at the individual accounting standards of which there are many. Just have a look at the contents page at the front of your notes and that will strike fear into any of you. And then what we have as well is we also look at the group accounts aspect, uh, which, which starts talking about the economic reality of whereby one business owns shares in several other businesses. and uh, That business has control over those other businesses. Uh, it looks better economically uh, and from, from a user's perspective if we prepare one big set of group accounts. But we'll, we'll talk more about that in detail when we get there. Just don't be put off by the fact that there's only three chapters within it. Those three chapters are quite large. So there is quite a lot of detail to get involved in when it looks at group accounts. And also it's important because the group accounts that you learn here in F1 feeds into what you see in F2. It advances that knowledge ever so slightly. OK, uh, so as we said, 45 percent, I think that's it, 27 marks. Uh, next bit little bit weird, I think, because if you think about the, the term or the title of the paper, it's financial accounting and taxation. Well, that's neither financial accounting and it's neither taxation. So it's it just sort of squeezed in to the syllabus, I feel. But you know, that, that's just my personal opinion. Uh, and it looks at managing working capital. Uh, it looks at how you manage cash. Uh, so working capital is imperative, isn't it? It's fundamental. Uh, within a business that you manage the inventory receivables and payables so that you don't run out of cash within a business. And also we look at how to, to manage cash with regards to going through and preparing cash flow forecasts. So we know how much cash we have this month. 
how much cash will we have in two or three months time okay uh, and we also look at sources of short-term finance so if we need to borrow money in the short term what are the best methods to adopt to borrow that money and we also look as well at, at short-term investment so if you have a cash surplus what is the best way to go through there and invest those short-term funds it's squeezed into the syllabus i think because uh, it doesn't fit anywhere else within within the other syllabus that you have and your other papers but it's still 20 percent so that's quite big isn't it so 20 percent of 60 questions that's 12 questions on the management of working capital cash and sources of short-term finance so a considerable aspect to think about then what you've got last little bit is talking about the fundamentals of business taxation which you know it's great isn't it it ties in to the title of the paper financial accounting and taxation uh, and that makes up the, the remaining 25 percent so it just looks at the the fundamentals i think that's key in that it doesn't use any specific tax rules from any tax jurisdiction it just looks at the basic principles that the majority of tax jurisdictions will follow okay so it looks at the basic principles that you can then apply specifically in your country okay it will therefore then be tailored to the specifics that you have back home okay 25 percent uh 25 percent of 60 is that there 15 questions isn't it uh that is very computational lots of numbers there will be the odd non-computational question again similar to the working capital cash and finance the majority of that will be computational with some small non-computational bits and likewise, again, with the accounting and reporting. Again, the majority will be computational with the odd non-computational aspect thrown in. So a lot of the exam, I, I feel, involves computation. OK, uh, so that does make it a little bit of a challenge with regards to the time pressures. But don't worry about that. The more you practice the questions, the quicker you'll become answering them. OK, so, so there you have it. That's your syllabus. You want to make sure there that you get enough to be able to pass that syllabus content. How do we do that? Well, let's look at the exam. Uh, I think you know the format of the exam. Uh, it's a computer-based assessment, isn't it? Okay, so no paper-based assessments anymore. It's all there done on a computer. Uh, they are objective test questions. So don't just think that's multiple choice. Uh, it, there's a lot more to objective test questions than what you think, and we shall discuss that in a moment. I do believe that there are 60 objective test questions per assignment. Uh, and they will be weighted according to what the syllabus weightings are. OK, so you can predict the number of questions that you will get. Uh, but the the question generator or your computer based exam will ensure that it is a fair assessment with regards to the level of difficulty and with regards to the level of time that each question should take. OK, uh, you've also got then the fact that it is 90 minutes. So that's an hour and a half. Uh, so isn't huge amounts of time, but it's enough to be able to attempt all of the questions. OK, uh, I think what students find the most challenging, maybe psychologically more than anything else, is the pass mark is 70 percent. So you, you cannot take liberties and decide to neglect part of the syllabus, hoping that it will not get examined. All of the syllabus will get examined and all of the learning outcomes within the syllabus will get examined. So you will get examined on the entire syllabus. So you do need to be comfortable with all elements of the syllabus. It sounds quite scary, but it isn't as bad as what you think, because you just need to know the basics and the fundamentals. You don't need to get involved in the tiny little nitty gritty bits of everything. OK, excellent. So let's just look at the exam questions. You may have seen something similar to this already. Uh, the style of the objective test questions, first of all, could be the, a multiple choice type question. Uh, so multiple choice like you have up there is essentially you choose any one of those four answers. Don't try and answer the question. I don't think it's even a question from F1. It's from another paper. Uh, but you have a question, four options. One is the answer. OK. Uh, as well as your multiple choice, you've then got there, is it multiple response? So multiple responses whereby you have more than one correct answer. So here again, you have a question. It highlights the fact there that you have two possible correct answers. So you need to tick the two correct answers. If you tick three, 
you'll get the question wrong. If you tick one, you'll get the question wrong. If you tick two and one of them is wrong, you get the question wrong. OK, so it can be quite a challenge. What can be more challenging as well is when you get those select all type questions. So it doesn't specifically say how many answers are correct. It just expects you to select all of the correct answers. Could be two, could be three, could be four, could be, it, it, it could be five. OK, you just do not know. OK, so I think they are the, the more challenging type of question. Uh, as well as your multiple response, you also have your drag and drop. OK, uh, so I can't physically drag and drop anything here. Uh, but you've got a question at the top there. You can see those shaded boxes in that light purpley style of colour. Uh, what you need to do is to answer the question. You need to drag any one of those numbers into the correct box. Again, you have to drag both of the correct numbers in to get the right answer. Again, just be careful. There is a box there that says zero. So if you don't think anything should appear within the purple shaded box, you have to drag and drop the zero. If you didn't, you would get the question wrong. That's a bit cheeky, isn't it? A little bit harsh, but that's the way the exam works. And you will get used to it as you go along. Uh, as well as your drag and drop, you also have filling the gaps. OK, so uh, you've got there is it the, the, the number entry that, that you could go through and put in there. So essentially filling in the gap, filling in the blank. Uh, there's nothing to say as well that you could get a sentence and, and a keyword is missing from that sentence and you need to put in uh, or write in the correct word okay to so go through there and fill in the gap again here this is a, an f1 question i think it's all to do with tax uh you have to enter in a number it does specifically you say you can see it up there give your answer to the nearest whole number and if you are pardon me if you are working in thousands remember to leave out the comma okay just put it in as an absolute number with no comma or decimal points uh, other one that you've got there is hotspots. What's a hotspot? Uh, it, it's it's whereby you have to click over a particular area of a graph or a diagram to indicate the correct answer. Personally, I don't think that lends itself very well to the type of question that you would expect within an F1 exam. That there aren't any graphs that we need to go through and draw. Uh, there aren't many charts or tables that we need to interpret. So I wouldn't expect many hotspot questions there within F1. OK, but if you do, literally you just hover your mouse over the correct area, click it to show where you think the right answer should be. OK, excellent. And then you've got a drop down list. Uh, so essentially with a drop down list, uh, you could have uh, a series of numbers to choose and you just click on the list. And instead of dragging and dropping it, you just drop down to the correct answer. OK. Uh, so, again, what you've got here is an F1 question. Again, it's to do with tax that you'll see at the end of the, the, the videos and the lectures. Uh, you need to put in there either a balance in charge or a balancing allowance. You don't know what a balancing allowance and charge is just yet. Don't panic. We'll sort it out at the end of the course. OK, but here, as well as putting in a number on the right hand side, on the left hand side, you need to drop down onto the correct answer again you need both right to get full marks okay so that's just a sample of the questions i hope you're happy with those there uh the key bits now that are the keys to success how are you going to ensure that you pass the exam you're probably already trembling within your boots uh, about the, the the syllabus and about the exam uh, but the key to success that i believe you need study the entire syllabus don't miss anything out don't go into the exam thinking oh i hope this bit doesn't crop up because it will as we said the exam questions examine the entire syllabus and they examine all of the learning objectives so it'd be worthwhile going in and looking at the learning objectives to make sure that you know what the learning objective is so you can think about the questions that you are going to be asked you also need to understand the basics well don't worry about the complexities for now yeah understand the basics and once you've understood the basics that will then help you further your advanced knowledge question practice it is fundamental i said at the start you can't pass this exam just by sitting at the other end of the internet connection listening to me working the examples with me you have to do the questions not just once but twice three times through 
and when you get doing those questions for the second or third time try and attempt them under timed conditions because the better you get doing the questions under time conditions, the better you will be when it comes to answering questions within the real exam. If you get stuck, hello, we're here. Uh, don't be afraid to use the Ask the Tutor forum. If you don't want to ask the tutor, there is the general SEMA forum, isn't there? Uh, so post your questions there. If you have any specific technical questions, feel free to direct them to me. I will go through there and on as regular a basis as possible, I will go onto the forum and I will answer the questions that you have posed. OK, uh, all that remains to be said is good luck. Uh, enjoy the course. Uh, if you do get stuck, you know where we are. We are here to help you to get you that possible or maximum possible chance of success within the exam. So start the hard work now.